Friday, 27th of January at uh, 12, oh, I looked at the time, 12, 12, midday, uh, Western Australia. Uh, it's a hot day today. Um, it's a beautiful, 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 beautiful sunny day. I will post this video. I'm going to create this video. I've done about five or six or eight videos in the last few days and they've all been quite emotional um very raw and i'm gonna have to go through them very carefully to decide if i'm gonna put them on my youtube because i've got to be very careful when i use names um for legality purposes and various things like that and just the respect issue of others but basically <clears throat> Sometimes when I'm really raw and really emotional, I, I just, I say it as it is, you know. So anyways, I thought I'd do this YouTube, uh, you do this video to post on my YouTube account because it's about time I updated you guys. My subscriptions are going up. I urge anyone that sees value in these videos or wants to see me succeed and become monetized. Uh, to subscribe subscribe and share my youtube channels i've got big plans for this youtube channel this has been a vision of mine for um oh I look at least eight years but it all started um uh in uh 1998 so i've forgotten what age i was then i think i was 25 or 26 or something so this has been a very, 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 very long dream of mine and I have been working towards it for a very, very, very long time. This uh, bookshelf here and this table here um, and these two white boxes here, you can see these two white boxes, they are full of my toolkit. They are not unpacked yet because I need to bring the filing cabinet in here. I need to bring the office desk in here. I need to get this room finished, okay? This library room, this library room, which I started this time last year in preparation for getting this cupboard brought up, which was a built-in cupboard. We purchased it and the, uh, it had to be built in place. It's basically... It's basically floor to wall, ceiling, wall to wall, built in place. It's a really big cupboard. It might not look it in the video, but it actually, um, it's actually, we purchased it for this room. It's connected to the wall. It's really solid. And, um, and I, I painted the wall. I did the, the, the cornice, oh, that was my hand. I did the cornices and that wall and the skirtings behind it about this time last year thinking that this room would be really fast and simple and I'd have the writing space up and running ASAP boom 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 I'd be in action boom 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 and then as you know from so many of my lives and my posts and various things like that <clears throat> this room thwarted me it thwarted me in so many ways and it's taught me so much so this room is my diligence room this room forever more shall be known as my resilience and diligence room. And the people that know my story and they come and see this um, room in person, they love it. It's like such a stunning room. It's got such stunning views of the mountains. Um, and everyone's like, oh, this is such a beautiful room. Even as it looks now, they go, oh, this is such a beautiful room. This is going to be so good when you get it finished. And then when I show them what I'm actually having to go through and what I'm having to do to get it finished, they all understand what a trial and tribulation has been walls have been out by like 10 centimeters okay skirtings and walls had big gaps in them so the previous owners just uh, did bodgy shit that made it look great but then when it came to me painting it I could see how when it really came to the reality of actually painting this room I could see it was a, in terrible condition so I had to scrape everything back, take it back to the bed beginnings. And then I saw these huge gaps everywhere. 
And then I had to re-stabilise everything, stabilise the walls to the skirtings. I've had to stabilise the, the the window frames to the to the walls. I've had to stabilise uh, glass panels. I like actually glass. There was gaps between the glass. Now you can see up there, I've had to really build up. I've had to really build up the silicon into the glass to fill up the cracks, to fill up the cracks between the glass and the frames. And over here, there was big gaps, big gaps between the glass and the wood. So, but the bodgy paint job that had been done here, like when you first look at a house and it's got the people's furniture in it, you don't sort of see these things. Now, I knew that, uh, I knew that the uh, uh, wood was, uh, um, sorry, I could see certain things, what I've shared before you before. I could see there was things I needed to do. Uh, I knew that the house was an old and it needed, it needed some, uh, it would need some extra <clears throat> attention compared to, say, a brand new house. <clears throat> But I just did not realise just how much attention. So this room, this library has basically, there's been many a time when I've just felt over, I just like it was too much for me, I couldn't cope and I've just pe kept persevering, persevering. I'm so close, guys. This is the last lot of silicon in here. Um, and I sand that back today when I sand all of this back. I don't know if you can see, but when I actually sand all of this back... Uh, then I'm ready for the first coat of paint. But I've had to build up the wood again. There was cracks everywhere. You know, like the wood was really damaged. I had to. Re I actually had to build up the wood again and, and make it all smooth and nice and good and I had to fill in all the cracks and all the gaps. And So it's getting there, guys. And then I also, what, I, what I've shared with you before, is I've had to fill in like all this see this window frame here I had to build up the plaster there was bit there was a gap like there was about a three centimeter five 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 centimeter gap you can sort of see it up the top there I don't know if you can see it but you can see that I've had to build up the plaster you can see here actually this is a classic uh where are you what can you see here you can see here can you see that gap there all right, can you see where I've put the silicon? And can you see the gap between the window, the, the window frame and the, the uh, uh, architrave and the skirting? Uh, sorry, the architrave and the window frame. So, yeah, that's what I've been doing. <sighs> Filling it up, making it strong. And, and then you can see here, because now I'm no longer taking it back to Jara. Now I'll just do a basic sand on here, okay? And I'll just prime it. So now that I know I'm not going to have it back to Jara, it simplifies the situation like completely. Because you can see here, you can see here how I've had to build up. I've had to build up the, um, like, fill out in the cracks with the silicon, fill it all up. And I was originally using this really expensive stuff that was um, Color Match, which was $14 a tub. But now I'm using this stuff here, which is $3 a tub. Last night I went through two. So what you see from that window frame just there, that basically used up two of these. So I've used up like 20 or something of them on this, on this job, including the skirtings down the bottom. So basically perseverance. This room is the diligence and perseverance room um, because, you know, I've shown this to you before, but look, originally when I first started to paint, all I did was paint on top of the crack. So there was two jip rocks and there was a crack in the middle and I thought, oh, I'll just put paint on top of it and that, that will cover it. But no, it didn't. So I, I had this room painted. It had its third coat on and it was looking amazing, but you could see the crack. So then I realized, oh no, I've got to put the, the flushing tape in. And then I've had to do three or four coats of plaster on top of the flushing tape. Um, and then now that's ready to be sanded and um, ready to be sanded and and then I put my first coat on second and third coat. And obviously down the bottom where I had to fill in all the skirtings, I redo that up, blah, blah. So that's not far off. Over here, I'm going to have to put the flushing tape back on. And then basically um, this little section here, I've decided, no, I'm not going to do a cheap, ver I'm not going to take shortcuts. I will finish that little area off. Um, and then... And last night I used my expensive uh, silicon that's colour coordinated to, to 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 do these gaps here, these tiny little gaps that are in here, 
And so when I sand that back, this can be sanded, and I'm going to uh, seal this um, seal this frame like I had down here with this skirting that's being done. That's just one coat because that's how it's going to come up. But the the window frames I'm going to paint in a paint color, but the skirtings and the door frame, even though you can see the old sort of, sort of nail hole coming through, I decide I'm not going to worry about that. So I'm going to put seal them so you can still see the jar of that. Paint the window frame so you won't see jar in them. Um, and yeah, that room will be finished. But what's the point of this live? The point of this live, guys, is I have been uh, suffering from quite extreme uh, depression the last few days. I've been barely able to... I, there's times when I just can't get out of bed. There's times when I'm, I'm collapsing from my grief. Um... And I keep plodding along. Every day I keep plodding along and doing one thing. So this this wall here now, this kitchen wall here now, is uh, is ready to be sanded, okay? And then I can do my first coat of paint on this today. Thank the Lord, okay? The, the This area here still needs a bit of a sand and one more coat. And that's ready. Or maybe even just a sand. If I don't want to be perfectionist, that's ready for painting. This just needs a little bit of a touch-up like what I showed you with the kitchen. It needs a bit of a touch-up here where we had the chip rock reaching the, the, um, the, the chipboard. This is where the old kitchen used to be. And I don't know if you can see the, the, the level. It was actually, I've had to build this up and build it up here. That needs more plastering, so that's not ready for painting. But the wall over here is... That's ready for painting. And I made a decision today because I cannot stand this kitchen as it is at the moment. It is just doing my head in. Like this, this is the way I have to live at the moment. This is how I'm trying to, you know, cook and, um, you know, it's just, it's just, I'm just, it's just, I can't, how are you supposed to be healthy when you, it's a, you can hardly even get to the sink? You know, and um, I'm not complaining, guys, but I've actually been uh, living like this now for a couple of weeks because this, uh, you know, this is this is it. This is my kitchen. This is my stove, you know. And the truth of the matter is, uh, because I've been so unwell lately, I've been able to only do a few. Uh, sometimes I'm working really late at night. Um, it's just... And I keep plodding along going, oh, this is just taking too long, but I have to keep going. What other choice do I have, right? Plod along, plod along, plod along, plod along, plod along. And today um, I shall be getting the first coat of paint up. Um, by the end of the day, I'll be able to get the second coat of paint up. And in all honesty, because this is just a temporary kitchen for three or four years, the second coat might just be enough for now. I might be able to accept it, even though I've got perfectionist tendencies. I might just be able to... The second coat might be enough, but I think um, I showed you the colour I'm using, and basically it's this one here. So I brought my got my so it's this. Um, I don't know if you can see the colour. It's a it's a miss. It's a I bought it from a, a garage sale, so it's a really nice charcoal grey. Now when you use dark colours, you often have to use three coats or four coats. You can't usually the two coats is not doesn't matter doesn't matter. If that's the case, I'll do the third coat in the morning. Or maybe I'll stay up late tonight and do the third coat later tonight. But this room here, this wall here, this wall here, all right, even though that's where the kitchen table is supposed to be, I came up with this idea because I've got, I've got to get my kitchen in order. And this other wall where the cupboard and the fridge is supposed to go it's not ready yet it needs more plaster but this wall doesn't this wall i can paint okay so in my depression i'm trying to come up with solutions to move me forward because i can't bear this kitchen any longer and as you can see all right i'm still stripping the glue up so that area over there needs to be accessible right so for for, for a fair while longer right so i came up with this idea because i just was praying to god and going into a, a place of, come on, there's got to be a solution that allows me to keep working on this house and have a functional kitchen because I can't bear it one day longer. 
the kitchen is really depressing me because I need to be able to make healthy food and I want to be able to sit at my table and do writing and because the library's not ready for writing. So I need to be able to write. I need to be able to do my Bible study. I need to be able to make healthy food. This is really impacting my mental health, okay? So I came up with this brilliant idea and it's so simple. And this is why I think if we reached out more to people to say, hey, got an idea of how I can get through Someone else would have realized this a week ago. <laughs> but mind you, back then, this um, a few days ago, this wall wasn't ready. This only got ready two nights ago. Anyways, what I'm going to do temporarily, I'm going to put my fridge and my shelf, my, my, my shelf that's eventually going to become part of the built-in kitchen, just for the temporary kitchen, and I'm just going to put them against this wall. Okay, I'm just going to put them against this wall. And actually, after this video, this is what I'll be doing. I'll be moving my fridge and my, my, uh, my, my shelf cupboard against this wall. And what that does immediately, immediately, sorry, then I, no, 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 that's what I was going to do. I went, no, Nadina, paint the wall, paint the wall, paint the wall. Actually, sorry. No. No, I've got one more day to go. Then I remembered, no, paint the wall, get the wall painted first. Even if you only get two coats up, paint the wall. And then tomorrow morning, so not today at all, but tomorrow morning I will put the fridge and my shelf cupboard against this wall. And what that does is it opens up this, um, this floor, which then allows me to work on this floor, set up the kitchen table, put things back into that shelf, uh, put the chairs around the table again and um yeah so yeah I just realized now I've got one more day to go but um anyways I came up with a solution like of how to temporarily set it up to get me through the, this temporary situation before I then put the fridge and the cupboard and install the cupboard like actually connect it because I'm going to actually be stabilizing my built-in cupboard so I'm going to be stabilizing this um this this shelf here which is a really solid bookcase. I'm going to stabilise it against this wall, like screw it into the wall. There's a stud here somewhere. I think it's there. And I'm going to be stabilising it against the wall um, to strengthen it. And then I'm going to put board behind one side. And that's going to be my permanent uh, built-in kitchen for the next two or three years while I save up before I get the, the final kitchen done. And that's going to be like... Oh, major moving forward like you know I'm just going to feel this like this most amazing sense of relief when that actually happens and so behind that cupboard will be the fridge okay the fridge will be end up going here and then um then I can put my mirrors and my pictures up and I, what, what 30 months later 30 months later can finally get a picture and a mirror up on the bloody wall and the place can start to finally, finally, finally become a home after 13 long, hard months. Or has it been longer? We moved in November. So it's 14. 14 long, hard, excruciating months. It has never taken me this long to unpack and set up a home in my life life <laughs> this has been one of the most arduous experiences i have had in my life guys i'm not talking about trauma here because i'm grateful at all times i've been grateful no there's been times when i felt really trapped by this place like it was too much for my body too much for my finances and you know my husband in the last 40 months has left twice 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 he's run away and both times I know it's because he has not been able to handle my stress from having to do so much. And rather than step up and help me out or step up and come up with solutions or step up and say, let's have a holiday or here, I'm going to give you some extra love. You're just doing so much. I'm so grateful. Let me massage you or let me make a really healthy dinner for us or Let's have a holiday. Let's have some time out. Let's just give you some your brain, your body some time out. Rather than come up with those committed, loving solutions, the times when my stress levels peaked to the highest they could be are the times that he left, and he left me in a terrible situation, and I had nothing but to keep going forward because what else? What are the other options, guys? What are the other options? Surrender to depression 
and just do nothing. Um, suicide. You know, basically, I this depression that I've been feeling uh, recently has been um, upsetting me because I don't want to fall into depression. But at the same time, there was obviously something happening there on a chemical level for me to, to, to succumb like that. Then I just had to surrender to God. I just surrendered to God. You know, waking up at 5.30 but not able to get out of bed until nearly 10.30. Uh, three mornings in a row now. This is the third morning uh, where I, haven't, I wasn't able to, just able to get up because I was too broken. But I, but I learned this other day that um, it's, not being, it's not being broken that actually is the hardest to work through because I was obviously broken when he left the first time, which is what, uh, sorry, the second time, which is 7th of December. He's been gone for a couple of months now. Um, and he just reached out two days ago and gave some contact, but the contact isn't anything that, um, you know, uh, sort of nourished my soul. It actually pummeled me into depression and I had to do a fair bit of uh, uh, an analyzing and working on my response and my reaction to um, uh, uh, the, the text message. But all it did was validate and confirm what I've been trying to work out and understand and accept, which is that he is potentially a narcissist, which is a really hard thing to accept. That, you know, you, you got someone in your life that you love with your heart and soul and you have to sort of accept that they may be a narcissist or I always thought it was on, on the autism spectrum and so I used to give him lots and lots and lots of allowances and lee, leeways and, and um, overcompensating and constantly, constantly um, giving too much and overcompromising and I, and I allowed bad behaviours and bad habits to, um, to become our dynamic so of course things are going to build up and escalate the way they did right so obviously this last two months has been the most spectacular wonderful growth period ever <laughs> and I'm so grateful I'm so grateful it propelled me to set up my YouTube channel it propelled me to dig deep into my borderline personality disorder um, um, label that got given that no, none of the medical health people are helping me work out trying to actually work out what that actually really means and understanding with and 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 also looking at my husband's behaviors and what he's doing and looking at uh, is there other elements to it apart from potential autism it, you know like because god kept giving me these really amazing memes and these really amazing youtube articles that were kept propelling me further and further along the journey of self-development and self-acceptance and one of those was uh, learning about the dynamic between an empath and a narcissist and also learning about um, um, toxic empath, empath, which is what I've been for a really long time, and learning how to change that into true, authentic, godly empathy. empathy. Uh, so really looking at myself, like it's been an incredible journey in self-development. Um, and one thing I had to really learn was, it is actually generally through a broken heart that we rebuild. And it's it's the process of rebuilding and rehealing that's actually can be more and rebirthing that's more painful, more exhausting, more challenging, the actual breakdown. The actual breakdown is straightforward. And I'll equate this to when I was really suicidal, um, April, May, June last year, it was easier to deal with being suicidal and trying to stop myself from suiciding than it is to have gotten to the next level of self-development grief, which is where I am now, where I'm depressed and above suicidality, feeling the same pain, the same stress, the same anguish, the same heartbreak, the same betrayals, got the same lessons uh, but on a different level. So the pain and the grief is, is excruciating. It knocks me out. I'll be standing up and I fall to the ground because it feels like a cannonball has just taken my insides out and there's this big <gasps> and I lose all my air and I, I can't breathe and like I actually literally can't get air inside me and everything's tight and 
everything inside me is constricted and tight and at the same time my body literally loses all its strength and I'm, it's unable to hold itself up and I literally collapse on the floor and sometimes I can't get up for, for, for minutes, for minutes. And, and there's other times when I just can't get out of bed I just, or, or I'll be out about doing something and I'll just lay down in bed and I can't get up. But not falling to suicidality and it's actually harder to be not suicidal. It's harder to feel these feelings and knowing, oh, but suicide's not an option. Because suicide's such an easy option, you see. It's such an easy way out. Like, yeah, just going to cut my throat, just going to, you know, going to, it's visualising all the ways you're going to kill yourself and then you have to force yourself not to actually do it. Now, that is actually easier to deal with than rebuilding oneself without using the crux of suicidality. And now hear that again, everyone. It is easier to deal with suicidality thoughts and trying to stop oneself from actually committing suicide when they're just ruminating over how they want to do it, which is what I was like, and having to force myself not to commit suicide. <clears throat> and that was an extremely scary space to be. That was easier than what I'm going through now. What I'm going through now is such a broken heart, rebuilding bit by bit by bit by bit by bit by bit by bit. And it's excruciating knowing that I'm not going to check out, not committing suicide. Um, just got to keep going through it, working through it, working through it, working through it, bit by bit. Try to get that breath in. Drink some water. Oh, you can't get up at the moment. Pray. Just for the moment, accept it. Yeah, there's all these things that need to be done that are stressing you out because they're not being done, but just accept it because right now what you've got to do is just be gentle with your body. Cocoon. Five senses, you know, I'm safe. Beautiful sky. Um, and in all authentic honesty, knowing who to trust, who to reach out to, but most of the time knowing I've just got to deal with it on my own. It's just me and God. You know what I mean? And um, and that's why this YouTube channel is so important, peoples, because I am not the only one that is living this experience. And it's such an excruciating life for me at the moment. There is nothing really but pain in my brain and my body at the moment and grief and I'm rebuilding, rebuilding my new me. You know, I'm just rebuilding me. In God's grace, like, and full surrender and full trust, just moving on to the next level, moving on to next my next chapter and and you know it's in full trust that I know I know financial abundance will come to me I know uh my mental clarity and my uh mental well-being and my cognitive ability is going to kick in again um I know that I'm going to feel this incredible sense of peace and contentment and happiness And you are too. For anyone who this resonates with, you you are too. It's just got to surrender in full faith to God. You've just got to trust that the journey is perfect, okay? The journey is perfect, everyone. It's perfect. It's what's meant to be. And it's from our brokenness and our broken heart that we get the full rewards because it's from that that we genuinely really accept that we are God's children and that we are protected looked after loved and that all is perfect all is well God's got our back God's got our back and we all have a journey we all have a destiny and it's when we surrender to that that the hardships and the pain just they don't disappear sorry 
um, I'm not going to lie, um, because of surrendering to our purpose with God doesn't mean we no longer feel pain ever again. But we definitely have a a true peace. Okay, I do feel peaceful. I have a deep sense of underlying peace, trust me. Surrendering to God has allowed peace to come into me that I've never had before. So... Um, It's just that um, the grief, the pain, the deep pain which that I'm working through, the rebuilding, that's that's what discombobulates me a bit and makes me really sort of, you know, um, um, but it's, it's just a, yeah, it's hard to explain. It's, I hope, I hope this, anyways, this, this video is about determination, uh, resilience and determination and just maintaining even if it seems like there's small steps if we're in full surrender to god and we're in full surrender to our heart and what 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 it is that we you know and we're using come from a place of love in our heart if we come from a place of love and being heartful um and we get out of our brain we and we just let the heart and love be our guiding You know, and, 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 and take that time out to just relax. Take that time out to just to be in the body as whatever it's going through in full in praying though, or not in not in like um not in not in a quagmire but in, 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 in surrendering, in peace. So praying went during those times of just just when one was really still in cocooning, that's our rebirthing, okay? into our true essence without all the trauma of our childhood and our worldly values that we've held attachment to and the worldly trauma bonds and all that. We, we, we're transmuting all that, okay? Mm. Keep well, my loves, keep well, okay? And again, subscribe. Share my channel if you want. Help me get monetized. That's what God wants. God wants for me to be financially secure and he wants me to share my story with you all and help inspire everyone. So help help me do God's work. Okay. Thank you. Love you. Bye.